What's good, y'all? It's your boy Ross back at it again with another video. So, I'm gonna check out 10 longest WWE pay per views of all time. Now, I'm all for a show being stacked with some good matches and, you know, everyone getting their chance to shine and uh, be able to put on a, a good performance. But I am not a fan of the shows being five to six hours. I just, I just can't do it. That's just too much wrestling in one amount of time I, I just can't do it that's been my biggest criticism for aew is their long pay-per-views like five six hours it's a little bit too much it'd be like 12 matches something including the pre-show you know sometimes excluding the pre-show it's, it's just it's a ridiculous amount and the same thing if you guys remember how wrestlemania used to be before they switched to two nights where they would have like a damn near seven eight hour show i'm like what the hell i can't I can't do that. I can only imagine people sitting in the arena watching a seven hour wrestling show. I just, I just can't. So I'm glad that WrestleMania is a two night event. And I really do wish AEW would kind of do something like that. Or maybe have shows within like the calendar year. Like how they have those special events. I think they could have a little bit of more of those to give that pay per view feel. So that way they don't have to defend every single title, every single championship, every single feud on one show. So it's not like a five, six, six hour show. You know what I'm saying? It's just, I don't know. I'm all about pay-per-views having a decent amount of matches. Six, six is the most and a decent amount of time. Maybe three, maybe three hours and 30 minutes. Four, you're stretching it. But three hours and 30 minutes show you can possibly get away with that so we're gonna check this out appreciate all love and support man let's get right into this thing of you may not know this but one of the biggest metrics in youtube is watch hours the actual time spent watching the content like mm -hmm. this fine youtube video here it's an important metric however wwe's mandate to make pay-per-views longer for the sake of increasing the amount of watch hours spent on the wwe network is worthy of a plague being placed upon their houses if you ever wondered why wwe pay-per-views started becoming longer and longer and longer to a certain point that would be why and while we won't be counting them for this list here most of these shows also feature an additional two Two hours of bullshit to sift through in the form of their pre-shows. And when you start getting into the territory north of seven fucking hours, yeah. how dare you? I'm Tempest Hailing from Parts Fun Known, and these are the 10 longest WWE pay-per-views of all time. Now, it can but before get, we get on with our list, make sure of course that you like this video, subscribe, and enable notifications to always on so you never miss a fun bit of wrestling content just like it. And watch every single list that we have on this channel. I bet if you put them all together, it probably doesn't equal the length of some of these shows. Number 10, Royal Rumble 2020. Four hours, six minutes. If you're gonna have, and here's the thing, I said the same thing. Four hours is pushing it. Like you're pushing it. A four-hour show, you're pushing it. Three hour and thirty minute, I think is kind of a, a good spot. And then you know, sometimes, <laughs> most of the time, AEW, even though they don't have many pay-per-views a year, it's like a, it's at least a five-hour show. I'm like, oh lord, that's damn near. Damn near a five hour show, you know. Have a self indulgently long pay per view, it might as well be a rumble. With 30 participants entering every 90 seconds to two minutes, the match has a minimum length of between 45 minutes to an hour, and that mm -hmm. isn't counting the theatrics of the actual final stretch. Added mm -hmm. the fact that WWE has finally decided to let the ladies have a go, and you're already looking at two hours of wrestling before yep. you even start thinking about your undercard. Speaking of undercards, if you know you've got two big ass matches coming up on your pay per view, maybe it's a good idea to keep your other matches as trim as possible hmm? Roman Reigns versus Baron Corbin in a Falls Count Anywhere match was actually a lot better than anyone thought it would yeah, be. Yeah, it was. That's no justification for it to be 22 minutes long. Fiend versus Brian and Becky versus Asuka also settled in for the long haul, but both produced. And honestly, the show as a whole is really good, which is the best way to keep a long show from feeling long. And the that's what helped that Royal Rumble. The show was actually pretty good. It was an enjoyable show. The uh, the the other matches between the Rumble, they were important. Had some type of, you know, you cared about them. And I think hopefully they will continue that trend this year. you obviously going to care about what's going to happen with Roman Reigns and, and Kevin Owens and the Sami Zayn and Bloodline storyline. So that definitely will be something interesting. I believe Bray Wyatt is having his... Uh, is it blackout or lights out match or whatever? Um, correct me if I'm wrong. He's having that match. I don't know the specific title of it, but I think people are going to in be interested to see him wrestling. So that's going to keep people engaged. So they can get away with a four hour show 
if the mid card matches flow well to the point where it doesn't seem long, you know. But once again, this only works for the Royal Rumble because both the matches are damn near a minimum of 45 minutes. So pay-per-view's length didn't seem to touch the crowd's enthusiasm as they popped massively to see Drew McIntyre eliminate Brock Lesnar towards the end of the night and then again when he eventually won the whole thing. Uh -huh. If only they'd been as loud at that year's WrestleMania. Fickle fans. Number nine, Stupid. Royal Rumble 2018 four hours, nine minutes. Another example of a bloody great Royal Rumble show making what would otherwise be an unacceptable amount of time to watch wrestling in one sitting mm -hmm. actually pretty enjoyable. History is made twice in one night as WWE not only debuts the first ever women's Royal Rumble, but lets it main event the entire show. There would definitely be better women's Rumbles down the line, but this one has a lot going for it. Mm -hmm. Sasha Banks and Becky Lynch starting off proceedings, the inclusion of women's legends like Trish Stratus, Lita, and Molly Holly, the entrance all putting their differences aside to save the crowd crowd's eardrums from Vicky Guerrero, and of course, the <laughs> crucial fact that the right woman won. The men's rumble, though, oh boy, I was there, and this is for sure a top three rumble, and there's even an argument to be made for putting it at number one. Heath Slater getting repeatedly brutalized on his way to the ring before turning <laughs> the tables on Sheamus, on Sheamus' birthday, mind you. Finn Balor making it to the final four as the match is Iron Man. The whole final sequence with coronated Golden Boys, Reigns and Cena versus New Japan Outsiders, Balor and Nakamura. But again, what really elevates this match is the ending, as WWE WWE beat its self-imposed Royal Rumble cold streak by making sure the right man took mm -hmm. home the win. Number eight, Money in the Bank 2018. 4 hours 11 minutes. Damn. There are some real peaks and troughs through this event, which isn't what you want to hear about a pay-per-view that lasts longer than the amount of sleep Vince McMahon gets in an average week. Both the men's and women's Money in the Bank matches are pretty great, with the men's in particular standing out for helping sow the seeds of what would later become Kofi Mania. Alexa Bliss and Braun Strowman made sense as winners at the time, even if their reigns with the briefcases were a bitch shit, with Alexa mm -hmm. cashing in in the same night and Strowman failing his cash in at that year's Hell in a Cell. Styles versus Nakamura was also among the better of their WWE matchups, even a Accounting for Nakamura's dick punching fixation. <laughs> yeah. The rest of the card is pretty mediocre to bad, though, with a lot of matches that could probably have been saved for the following week's Raw or SmackDown. Daniel Bryan versus Big Cass, Seth Rollins versus Elias, Roman Reigns versus Jinder Mahal, uh, Bobby Lashley versus Sami Zayn. Yeah. No, you're gonna watch them all, though. Number seven, WrestleMania 20. Four hours, 30 Damn. Minutes. The oldest event on our list by more than a decade, WrestleMania 20 just goes to show that tediously long pay-per-views are not necessarily a recent phenomenon. There's so much good stuff here. Jericho versus Christian, Eddie versus Angle, but there's a ton of padding too. The Playboy evening gown match is pretty much exactly what you expect. <laughs> the tag team championship match is a who's who of who cares. Garrison, yeah. Kate, and Mark Jindrak, anyone? Remember that team? Because I don't remember that team. And Lesnar versus Goldberg, which could have been and was great under different circumstances, Mm -hmm. is 14 minutes of two men who've just handed in their notice performing a masterclass in not being arsed. Like a lot of pay-per-views <laughs> on this list, the length of this show is counteracted somewhat by the quality of the main event. A triple threat between Triple H, Shawn Michaels, and Chris Benoit, which is a legit five-star banger. Yeah. However, of course, due to reasons that should be fairly obvious, the payoff doesn't really stick the same landing that it did on a modern viewing. The mm -hmm. show closes with a final shot which, while uplifting at the time and more than justified the event's length for contemporary viewers today comes across as equal parts tragic and chilling Number yeah six, and that's the crazy thing about that whole situation like seeing that at the time probably would have you know people would have thought this is going to be a moment in history that people look back on fondly and now it's a moment in history that people look back on with with sadness honestly sadness bro it's just uh it's it's, it's just, that's just a tragic situation all around. Royal Rumble 2019. Damn. Wow, 40 minutes. I'm starting to think that WWE should just stop putting other matches on the Royal Rumble card. Start with one, let R-Truth do a funny little rap about his own name, have the other one, and then get everybody out before the pub shut. I'm kidding, mostly. If there's going to be a musical performance, it should be by Jillian Hall. But this is one of those Royal Rumble pay-per-views that goes on for so long that even the good matches feel like filler. Buddy Matthews, Akira Tozawa, Kalisto, and Hideo Itami for the Cruiserweight Championship? Cool. How long did we pay the babysitter for? Asuka versus Becky Lynch? Finn Balor versus Brock Lesnar? My favorites. Will this be done before I go into work tomorrow? <laughs> the Rumbles for this year, however, do not quite make up for this insane runtime. The women's Rumble had yet to hit its stride outside of the best choice being chosen to win, and the men's match just 
sort of happened. Honestly, I remember nothing about this match outside of Nia Jax being the most bizarre final entrance uh -huh. for Royal Rumble ever. This was the end of a near five hour pay-per-view. Maybe those in charge just went as delirious as we all did having watched it. Number five, WrestleMania 32, oh, boy. four hours, 49 minutes. This may not be the longest pay-per-view on this list in terms of actual hours and minutes, but you'll be hard pressed to find a wrestling show that feels longer. Yeah. There are some good matches here. The Intercontinental Ladder match and the WWE Women's Championship match in particular stand out as a cut above the rest, but there are some baffling decisions on this card too. Lesnar versus Ambrose is a huge letdown. And yep. for some reason they have Rock come out and vamp with the Wyatt family for like a really long time even though the show is already four hours long at that point. <laughs> and look, I know it's Adam's favorite WrestleMania main event of all time, but I'm going to have to put my foot down. Triple H versus Roman Reigns is painful to yeah. watch. It feels like a mad wrestling... I don't, I don't think I actually watched the match in its entirety. I think this was the first WrestleMania I, I didn't even really like. I don't even... I forgot what I was doing and I missed it. But I don't even think I watched it. Like the next day, I watched some of the parts I wanted to see. And then I didn't even, I skipped over the main event. Like I glossed over it. I checked out parts. But I did not watch the match in its full entirety, I don't believe. This was the one WrestleMania. I just, I missed it for whatever reason. I was doing something the day of, the night of. So I watched it the next day. And I was just like, oh, okay. That main event. From what I saw, I just uh, eh, didn't really care for it scientist spent his entire life trying to genetically engineer the least interesting match ever it has everything an over-the-hill legend versus an overpushed baby face an exhausted crowd who are starting to wonder if the whole event is some kind of psychological experiment a predictable finish and about 15 more minutes than it needed to be honestly yeah. it's so bad that after a certain point you almost have to appreciate the sheer balls of wwe for making you sit through it almost number four the greatest royal rumble four hours 58 minutes in the words of nelson Muntz, i can think of two things wrong with that title <laughs> wwe's first foray into the land of massive human rights violations and honey was definitely not great and it was barely a rumble the only things on the line were an ugly green belt that looked like it was designed by and for supervillains and a trophy <laughs> that looked less structurally sound than the world cup stadium adding insult to injury was the fact that to prove this was indeed the greatest royal rumble ever wwe expanded the number of entrants to 50 instead of the usual 30 Presumably based on the logic that, as this list is sure to prove, bigger number equals more good. Again, no. lads, if you're going to have an 80 minute long rumble, maybe don't have nine other bastard matches. That's Did wild. AJ Styles and Shinsuke Nakamura really need another underwhelming match with a pointless ending in their best of who gives a shit series? Was it absolutely vital that we see Jeff Hardy miss Jinder Mahal with a whisper in the wind <laughs> and they have Mahal sell it anyway? <laughs> yeah. That one actually is quite funny. That Speaking is. of funny, however, without this rumble, we would have never gotten to see Titus O'Neil trip during his entrance mm -hmm. and slide under the ring, which in many ways means this really is the greatest royal rumble number three wrestlemania Jesus, 34 bro. five hours like i said when you get into this five hour territory bro that's that's a long time to be watching wrestling bro it just is it just is i i'm i love wrestling like the next person but that's that's like me watching like a a, a five hour football game and i love football but at some point, you get tired of watching it. You know what I'm saying? You, you kind of got to let your body and your mind and what you're seeing just relax. You got to have that step away from whatever you like. Hell, I can, you know, I'll, I'll play the game for a few hours, but eventually I have to step away from it and do something else. Kind of let my mind and, you know, my eyes and everything else just relax. So imagine sitting there for five hours watching a wrestling show after some point, you, you just get tired. You just get physically drained, especially if there's some good matches on there. You know what I'm saying? And you're in the crowd. You're turning up. You're hype. There, those, it happens quite a bit where a crowd is so drained from what they just saw. They don't have no energy for the next match, you know? So hours and three minutes Jeez. the shows just keep getting longer and the endings just keep getting more disappointing yep. sometimes it's difficult to tell after a show of this length whether a main event is actually bad or if it's just sitting through a five hour long pay per view has made you hate the very concept of wrestling truth be told reigns versus lesnar is actually a pretty decent little match if you love a million finishers being hit and being yeah. kicked out of in front of a crowd that absolutely doesn't want to see it reigns yeah. even gets his head busted open at one point which as a wrestling fan in 2018 is the only thing you wanted to see in the world styles versus nakamura was pretty disappointing 
been given their potential, but the match might have been received a lot better if WWE hadn't insisted on giving every wrestler on their roster that sweet, sweet mania payday. There's some and that's the problem, too. I think the match could have benefited from them um the aj styles and shinsei shinsuke nakamura match we all expect that to be like the main event the show stealer but you gotta understand shit people are tired <laughs> how many times have you know what I'm saying it's just too much going on people have already drained they don't have they don't have any more energy to give to a match <laughs> Some other great stuff on here too. Charlotte versus Asuka is fun. Ronda and mm -hmm. Kurt Angle versus The Authority that was way fun. better than anyone could yeah, have expected that was from Rousey's really fun. debut. And Braun Strowman and Nicholas put on a five-star masterclass against the bar. But, and I cannot stress this enough, this show is over five that's hours long bro. and that doesn't include the pre-show if you were watching this in the uk that means you didn't go to bed until 6 a.m number two wrestlemania 33 five hours and five minutes no wonder undertaker suffered his second ever wrestlemania defeat at wrestlemania 33 he was probably knackered after standing around for five hours waiting for his match to start undertaker's getting up there man he can't be staying up murdering people until 1 a.m anymore and murder people he certainly did not putting on the type of performance that only serves to remind you that the people you grew up admiring are also subject to the laws of entropy. It probably mm -hmm. wouldn't have been too bad if Taker had kept his promise and stayed retired after the match, but John Cena and the Saudi royal family had other ideas, so here we are. Yeah, I, uh, we once he put the hat down and uh, the jacket down, I was like, okay, that's it. And this, and at this point, I'm like, okay, you can do some things here. Undertaker's retired, even though that that last match wasn't. It was kind of lackluster, but if he's gonna retire, cool retire at wrestlemania now let's go with roman reigns being the most hated individual because he's the second person in wrestlemania history or you know wrestlemania history to beat the undertaker and they didn't pull the trigger honestly and i'm still one of these people that i'm on the fence of the undertaker never losing a streak you know how i feel about that but if there was one person that should have or could have beaten the undertaker and would have benefited from it is Roman Reigns because now you give people a legit reason to boo him. Now you give people that nuclear heat and you just run with him as being this arrogant heel. I beat the Undertaker. Have him talk trash. Have him win the WWE Championship now. He's a heel. People, it, and then at some point you can turn him babyface. It's it just, I don't know. I don't know. What do I know? I'm going to leave it to the professionals as I say in the chat. Sadman Crothers wasn't the only one whose match suffered from being put on past his bedtime. Randy Orton and Bray Wyatt had a weird spooky bollocks match that looked like it was produced by Spirit Halloween. And yeah. John Cena, no bullshit, proposed to Nikki Bella, which doesn't feel quite like the WrestleMania moment it was supposed to be, considering no. how their relationship worked out. There yeah. are some great moments here, like Shane McMahon carrying AJ Styles to match of the night, and the Hardys making crazy. one of the greatest returns in WWE history. Which was but this dope. era of WrestleMania just cannot be watched back in one sitting. And number one... WrestleMania 35, five hours and 20 minutes. So at the beginning, I said like something like seven hours. Um, if you're watching the pre-show and everything else in total, it's definitely close to six to seven hours. But the actual show itself being five hours and 20 minutes is just wild <laughs> humans weren't built to do anything for an uninterrupted five hours and 20 minutes straight except sleep and argue with strangers on the internet make sure to leave a comment below if you watched infinity war and endgame back to back it would only take 10 minutes longer than it would take to watch wrestlemania 35 and that's with credits and not including the pre-show mm -hmm. the worst thing about this show is that it actually isn't that bad it just takes forever sometimes i wake up in the middle of the night and i worry that it's still going on sure there are some stinkers on this show like mm -hmm. samoa joe defending his united states title against Rey mysterio in a one minute match or kurt angle being retired by sorry it says here baron corbin but surely that can't be right either way <laughs> seth rollins versus brock lesnar is a hot opener where the yeah, white man won and kofi versus brian is a great match that leads to it an all-time great wrestlemania moment in the heartwarming climax to kofi mania the women's triple threat under delivers a little and the yeah. ending is a bit of a mess but what really lets it down is that it's being performed in front of an audience that's genuinely begun to wonder if they'll have to start getting their mail delivered to the arena historic glass shattering main event is it ladies that sounds nice but a couple of quick questions before we start have i died and is this purgatory and that's our list which russ and here's the thing about that you know uh that was a fun uh wrestlemania for the matches that was on there but if you just cut out half of that 
I think the women's match would have been received even a lot better because the crowd would have had more energy. At this point, we saw Seth Rollins beat Brock Lesnar in a shocking turn of events. Then we saw pretty much Kofi Mania be, you know, reach its, its, its conclusion and him winning the championship. Crowd's already hyped. So it's like, all right, if you're going to main event it with the ladies, it you got to cut a lot of that shit out. You could have had the Batista and, um, and Triple H situation. You could have had that. That's fine. You know, but there's certain stuff you, you, you probably should have cut out. You should have possibly cut out a lot more to only save space. So that way the crowd's not burnt out and then the women can close off the show. Because the crowd was dead. We're not dead, but they, they didn't have as much energy after we just saw some crazy uh, uh, things happen prior to. So it's all about timing, placement, and, you know, really just the crowd's energy, man. So, yeah, that's that's my only thing about that. And I, I'm glad recently, you know, the pay-per-views haven't been too terribly long. You know, I, I always said three hours 30 minutes is a good spot four is pushing it you don't really want to go past four if you can't you know if you can that's a good sweet spot for pay-per-view length five and you know that five plus that's a little bit too much hell having 10 matches or seven to eight matches on a, like a three hour and 30 minute pay-per-view that's too many matches in my opinion too it should be a decent amount not everybody should be able to get on the card i know you want to include everybody but not everybody should be able to man so comment down below let me know what is a good time limit and a match amount for a standard pay-per-view and we're not talking about like the big ones like wrestlemania or anything like that but just for a standard pay-per-view what is a good amount of time runtime it should be and that's including the pre-show including the pre-show what's a good runtime and what's appropriate amount of matches let me know down below but i appreciate all love and support road to 150k and i mean still you're in the speed of youtube wrestling champ appreciate y'all kicking with me see you on the next one peace